Hi, welcome to this Revit tutorial. In this Revit tutorial, I will focus on showing you how to check your drawing units and how to change them. And I'll also show you how to draw in your basic grid line so that you can place columns easily. So without further ado, let's get started. So to check your drawing units, you should go to the Manage tab over here at the top. And you should move to the left. And under the set Settings subsection, you can find a button called Project Units left click it once and as you can see over here the length has a unit of millimeters by default in this Revit file so to change the unit for our length we just need to left click on this button that I'm pointing at over here so if I left click on that then I'll be given this uh, small window over here with quite a few options so the first uh, thing that we'll see is the units Right now we are using millimeters in this uh, Revit file and if I want to change this, I'll just left click on this drop down box and I can see many different options for the units of length and for this one I'll just use meters over here because I'm used to it and for the rounding, I usually like to keep it at two decimal places for meters and the unit symbol option over here is currently at none what it means is that Revit will not display the unit symbol so if I'm using meters, it will not display M at the end of the number or the length of the object, for example. I usually like to have it display the symbol for my unit so that I know that I'm drawing in the correct units. And suppressed trailing zeros mean that if there is a figure in your drawing file where there are many zeros behind the decimal place, you might want to use this option but right now we don't really need it so I'm not going to click on it and for use digit grouping I never really had a use for it so I don't use it at all so I'll just click on OK after I've changed the units the rounding and made the unit symbol display so I'll just click on OK and you can see that the format for length has changed and it now has two decimal places over here and it also shows the symbol for the unit of meters and the and this is going to indicate to us that we are drawing in meters so we don't have to worry about the units anymore and once you click OK Revit will make those changes and we can continue drawing already so right now we need to go and draw our grid lines for column placement so now you need to go to the architecture tab and move to the very right and under the subsection called datum you should be able to find grid so you should left click on it once and by default you'll be using the line drawing tool so this tool will help you to draw out straight lines so if I were to left click anywhere on the screen over here and drag down and left click again I would have drawn myself a grid line so if I want to go and adjust the grid line length, let me just get out of this uh, grid drawing tool by just hitting escape twice. And if I click on grid 1 over here, and if I see this circle over here, this means that I can extend or lengthen, uh, sorry, if I can extend or shorten this grid 1. And okay, how, how, how do I uh, lengthen this? So if I want to lengthen this, I click and drag this dot or circle up and let go and it will extend the line if I want to shorten it I click and hold on this circle and drag it down and I'll shorten the grid line so if I want to draw more grid lines in a manner that they're spaced out equally I have a tool that Revit can help me in in drawing equally spaced grid lines. So if I go back to the grid uh, line drawing tool, I should choose the pick lines option and what it does is that it selects your existing grid line and then it will draw a new grid line based on the offset that you've set. So I'll demonstrate now. So right now I'll set my offset to 5 meters just for the example over here and if you notice if I hover my cursor slightly to the left of grid 1 you'll see a faint blue line that's kind of like yeah dotted ish so yeah that that 
faint blue line will indicate where the new grid line will be placed so if I hover to the left the new grid line would be to the left of grid 1 if I hover to the right the new grid line would be to the right of grid 1 so if I want to keep it to the right I'll just keep my co cursor to the right and I'll left click once and you can see that grid 2 has already appeared to the right of grid 1 so I'll continue doing so by keeping the cursor to the right of the existing grid line and I'll just continue over here and I'm already done so as you can see that I've already drawn my grid lines that go from bottom to top and it's gone from left to right already so now I need some grid lines going horizontally across so how I do it is to go back to the line drawing tool over here and I like to set my offset back to zero or you can just keep it at five meters it's up to you and I like to zoom in over here and start at the end point of grid 1 and I like to extend by about any certain distance that I like well for now I'll just use 2.5 over here I'll left click and drag and I would have my horizontal grid line over here now I usually do not like to have this uh, grid dot exactly touching this grid line over here so I like to go and extend grids 1 to 5 slightly lower down so here's I do, so here's how I do it so I'll just click on grid 1 over here once and I hover over this circle over here again and I click it and drag it down and you can see that grids 1 to 5 have gone down already so you might ask how do I extend one grid line at a time so here's how you do it if I want to extend one only I can just click on this 3d button right here you'll switch to 2d and if I were to click and drag on this dot here it will only affect the length of grid line one so if I want to go reset it back to the length of grids 2 to 5 I can just drag on this button uh, this dot right here and pull it up and you can see that it will automatically go back to its original position so now to draw draw the remaining of these horizontal grid lines I'll just go back to the grid drawing tool you can also find this in the structure tab in the same position in, under the subsection of datum so I can just click on grid over here and I have the same tools and I'll just click the pick lines tools again and I'll keep the offset of 5 meters and if you notice instead of uh, hovering left or right now we're hovering slightly to the top or bottom if I hover slightly to the bottom the new grid line would be drawn to the bottom of the grid 6 if I hover it slightly to the top it will draw it above grid 6 so I want to draw it above so I keep it above grid 6 and you can see that grid 7 is now drawn above grid 6 so now I'll just continue and I'll finish off my oops I'll finish off the grid lines and yeah there you go so now that we've already drawn our grid lines it's best that we name our grid lines appropriately how I normally like to name them is by having alphabets between grids 1 to 5 so I like to name 1 as A and 2 as B and 3 as C and so on so now that uh, we've renamed these uh, vertical grid lines now let's rename these horizontal grid lines so starting from grid line 6 to 10 I'll usually name them as numbers but I'll start the grids at the number 1 so I'll choose grid 6 to be number 1 and grid 7 will be number 2 grid 8 will be number 3 and so on so now that we've already renamed the grid line system so the naming system works like this so if I have a column located over here it will be in the middle of the intersection between grid C and grid 2 
so that column that will be named as column C2 so you will not have any naming problems because all the names should be unique because if any one of these grid lines are named the same Revit will have a problem so for example if I change grid E to 1 and hit enter Revit will have this error message pop up so it will say the name is already in use and it says that we should enter a unique name so I click on cancel it will revert back to the old name which is E my final tip for this video is to show you where to where and how to go and adjust the placement of these naming bubbles so I'll go and show you how to place this naming bubble on the left here for grid 1 so if I left click on grid 1 you can notice that there are these two tick boxes these tick boxes identify where your naming bubbles will be placed right now it's only ticked on the right so that means that the grid bubble will only appear on the right so if I untick the one over here on the right the naming grid bubble on the right will disappear and your grid line will be unidentifiable because there are no grid bubbles whatsoever which is not a good thing because you definitely need to be able to identify each each grid line so if I want to place the grid bubble for grid 1 on the left I just need to go and check this tick box on the left of uh, grid 1 and you can see that the naming bubble will appear on the left and for grid A for example if I left click on it you'll notice that there are, there are these tick boxes on the bottom and the top the, pr the, the principle is the same as what I've shown before so if I uh, uncheck this one and check this one over here it will move the naming bubble to the top instead of being at the bottom and another, another tip for these naming bubbles is that say for example I have an obstruction over here that kind of blocks out this grid A bubble and I can't place it over here for example just, just imagine that and you say I have this scenario what I can do is that I can break up the line in such a way that uh, I can move this grid bubble slightly off center I do this by clicking on this button right here it says add elbow so once I've added an elbow I can move the grid bubble A far away so that it won't be obstructed and I can only move it left and right with this uh, dot here if I want to move it uh, along the vertical part I can do it but it's only a very limited option over here and if you want to go and reform a straight line all you need to do is just drag this dot and bring it back to the middle over here and it will reform this grid A as a straight line again and that's all the tips for this video and if you liked it uh, do give it a thumbs up and if you want more Revit tutorial videos do let me know in the comment section and without further ado I'll end this video here and thanks for watching